Turn off. I have to go flip a breaker to shut this thing off. What in the world? Okay. It's off. So the plan of attack is to leave tomorrow, be there by like five o'clock the next day, wake up that next morning, and do a one day. I'm gonna stay at the Epic Bait Molds complex, or their house is what most people would call it. I'll show you around the place too. This might be like a traveling, I'm not gonna say vlog. This is, this might be like a traveling episode where it's about the trip a little bit too. Welcome to Marling Travels, episode one. Spy bait, that's what we're gonna make when we get there. An actual sinking, not a floating, like I did in the bit in that one one day where everybody called me out because I didn't know spy bait sink. I haven't I don't fish with them much, okay fellas? I didn't know. I just didn't know. Spy bait though. I'm gonna put enough weight in the belly of this little thing. So that it sinks. Nice thick steel blades too on this on this guy. Long screw eyes. This is gonna be out of piece of basswood. Yes, I did a little bit of planning. It's still legal. The feds aren't knocking down my door, so it's still, I'm still able to do that. And we may or may not be designing a mold while we're down there. Ooh, I need to send them the picture of what we're supposed to. We might have backup if this bait doesn't work. It's down in Alabama, it's gonna be about 60s when I'm down there. We're in the 20s up here. I think the fish bite, still, I wouldn't know. I don't live in Alabama, but Jason says the fish bite. You know Richard Green, the fishing machine? He lives around that area too, and he's, he's still catching fish, so. Anywho, let's just run through this really quick. Drill, going in the Makita bag. I do this on every one day that's out of the ordinary. Pokey thing, utility knife, drill bit index, the whole freaking thing, you never know. You never know when you need a really specific size drill bit. I don't know why I'm not saying the things anymore, I just stopped. You know, hooks, weight, lead shot, screw eyes, those are important. I tried to do a riverbank build last spring and I like, I forgot so much stuff I couldn't even make the video. So I'm really being, I'm being very aware of what I need right now today. Sandpaper, bacon soda. I need to go to Hobby Lobby and get some super glue. I'm actually gonna bring some UV resin this time. UV resin and a light. This is, I'm gonna put a clear coat on a bait that we're not making in this shop. And then I got something you guys need to thank me right now, actually. Go ahead and put your thank yous in the comments right now. Just say thank you. Because I am not going to add yet another clickbait video about this stuff to YouTube. <laughs> it's just in the video. I didn't, I didn't bait you, okay? This is supposed to be the blackest black paint in the world. Um, I just want to put it on a lure and see what it looks like. It probably will just make it look like a void of black with two little spy, spy bait spinners on the front and the back, but whatever, let's, let's try that out. Of course, the wood and the hardware and the screw eyes and the spy bait props and everything. More pliers and a pin and stuff. Anymore, I really just feel like that's a tradition to show you everything I bring when it's not made in the shop, but I don't need to do that. Let's, I'm gonna turn the camera off and turn it back on tomorrow because I'm not on my trip yet and everything I show you today is kind of pointless. So, See you tomorrow. It's cold out. It's 4.30 in the morning. There's still nothing to say. Boy, this is gonna be a fun trip. A fun trip full of nothing to say. But I think I can get to Alabama in like four, three, by three o'clock today. That's pretty cool. Really not that bad. Just bringing one rod. You saw what I was making, that little spy bait. I don't need a bait caster. See you on the road. <laughs> Okay, fellas, at the first gas station for the trip. It's the one closest to my house. I'm just fueling up. Oh, man. Yeah, this isn't going to be a travel vlog. I'm going to stop now. See you in Alabama. Alabama. It's nice here. It's morning. It's the next day. I've been in Alabama overnight already, and I, I was just kind of hanging out with Jason and Amanda from Epic Bait Molds. I'm in their shop. I shot a bunch of B-roll last night. I'm probably rolling it over this. There's some Epic rivets on the machine. And Jason and I have been working on the backup. You know I've come here to do a one day because there's open water here, not ice everywhere and snow. But just in case that one day doesn't work, we've been working on something. Uh, 
Um, also, in the middle of the night, well, I woke up at probably 4.30 today. If, if I have the right size rod, this could be cut, like, if there's a sprue here and there's two baits, I could cut rods that go from here to here, and then you could do, like, a core shot, where, like, you shoot this bulb, and then you pull the rod out, and then you shoot the whole tail. Yeah, so that's what I'm... So I, ha I picked up these... They're welding rods. Oh, yeah. And they're aluminum. It heats up and cools down much quicker than steel. So in the past, I've tried core shots with steel, and the steel sucks all the heat out of the plastic saw as it goes around it. It won't heat up with the plastic. So as you're injecting, the steel cools it and causes the denting, and that's why when you do like core shot stick baits, you get dents in them. Yeah, but Plus, that just takes all the heat in. So. This will take all the heat in, heat up, and allow the plastic to flow around it instead of denting. We'll, we'll prove it out though, today. Yeah. That's my theory. <laughs> Especially with this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm excited. As you can see, that's a simple bait, but that's the point of this. It's the backup. Two inches. Put on a 16th ounce jig head. If that doesn't catch fish, you're not gonna catch fish that day. Oh. Oh. That's the perfect size. That's perfect fit on a 16th ounce ball head. Absolutely perfect. This will be about five inches wide. How many cavities are you thinking? Um, about the sprue will be about here. Four, five, six, so 12. 12? Probably 12. Laminatable. 12 cavity, laminatable, backup mold. <laughs> That's a funny name. One day. I already drew the shape of this bait, this spy bait. I don't have a vise. Do you have a vise? I might have a vise. We have a vise. This will help. Sometimes you gotta beg, steal, and borrow your tools for bait making. Have no shame, fellas. That's sturdier than my vice at home. Nice. All right, I'm gonna cut this shape out with a handsaw. Bandsaws are nice, man. Okay, there's a bench grinder out here. Jason says this thing needs encouragement to start. You gotta oh, pull it on, okay. Yeah, that's much better. Power tools. Did that work? Yeah. Oh wow, I was a trap. Perfect shape and everything. Oh that actually worked quite well. It ground concave surfaces onto all the edges, but that's no big deal. Because we're carving that off anyway. Man, when you're out of your element, the tiniest little steps seem like giant achievements. I always like this like getting a bait here. I like everything to be clean. Sharp lines, really defined, smooth. And then you start carving, and you're carving on something that's already nice. Turns out better, you know? Super sharp object, randomly placed in a bag that I'm digging around in. Already carving. 10 minutes later. Do you have super glue? Yes. Uh, is it thin liquidy or is it like gel? Uh, I forgot to pick up super glue from Hobby Lobby, fellas. Jason to the rescue. Look at that. A gallon of polyurethane. Fast drying. That'll just take like 15 minutes. I'll dip the bait in. We don't need super glue. Well, I wish, I really wish I had super glue, but we can use other glues. That's like sacrilegious. Jason has a layout for the backup done. This is what it will look like. That's nice. Yeah, that's not wasting any space at all. No. That's very, nice. very compact. Yeah. In my mind, I'm comparing this build to my typical riverbank build, which are really, really choppy and not finished well at all. And I'm like, man, I'm doing like such a good job. It's so clean. But then I remember like I'm using a vise. I'm, I'm using power tools and stuff. It's not that much out of the ordinary. Bait is all shaped out, sanded, smooth. The shape that it will be. I left it a little chunky. This is a very small bait. Next, I have to drill the lead hole. I'm thinking not 3 8 probably 5 16 this bait's gonna need enough lead to sink, and I'd only want to drill one hole. Five sixteenths is about as big as I can go here. There's a lead pot in this shop, 
and it's not plugged in. What do you know? Even when it's somebody else's. Can't remember. Oh, it looks brand new. Look at this. It's like it's not even used. This is just gonna be a pleasure. Got some Lee ingots. And now we wait for the lead to heat up. I don't know, should I read comments? I'll give it a shot. Oh no. She's rolling coal and it stinks. Ventilation. And I'm gonna come over here so I'm not in the path of that smoke. Make a Rapala original floater. I mean, that's about as basic, basic as it gets. I don't think those are even weighted. They use a wire harness system and a slot and the hook, the bottom hook weights the bait and it's a specific shape, an upside down teardrop. There's less buoyancy in the belly just because it's skinnier down there too, so I should. That bait actually is a really good example of like how you should design a bait if you want it to float without weight. It's encompassing, you know, when it comes to bait making. I turned on the lead pot, that's why it smells weird in here. Oh Jesus. It's, uh, it's, you... it's juicing, and I got the ventilation. Is that normal? I mean, Jason just walked in here and I'm Woo! like, everything's okay. I know it stinks and it looks like lead smoking over there, but <laughs> lead pot christening, man. Okay, what brand of super glue do I use? That's a personal question. I don't know if I even want to answer it. Just kidding. It's uh, if you go to Amazon and type in thin super glue, it's the first one, usually. That stuff's good. Extra thin so you can seal baits with it and it actually soaks into the wood glue and stuff, or the wood grain and stuff. All right, a couple more fellas. My mom just texted me and said, hey, did you drive down to Alabama? <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even tell her. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, mom. I was thinking you should wear an elf hat while carving. Subliminal humor seems your style. Great video, thanks. Uh, dang it, I have nothing to say to that one, so I won't put that in the video. I'll be posting more soon, fellas. Dot, 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 dot. Eight days later, no videos. <laughs> yeah. I drove to Alabama. That's my excuse. Have you even considered live streaming some of your work for the stuff you don't feel is video worthy? I feel like my live streams would be pretty lame because I'll sit there and carve for like 20 minutes and not say anything. I'd have to be paying attention to comments and stuff while I carve. Yeah, I've considered it. It might happen someday. I'd have to make it happen. I'd have to work up the motivation, but it might happen. Jason likes live streaming on Instagram. Right. Lead's hot. Ooh, this one sports good. <laughs> Nothing like a fresh lead pot. Okay, fellas, we're gonna we're about to do something different. That involves super glue, but I don't have my thin super glue with me. All I have, I think I got this from a gas station because I needed to fix a lure while I was out fishing. And this stuff is, it's like pasty. So I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna sprinkle some baking soda on top of that just for ceremonial purposes. And I'm gonna hit it with the accelerator. That pulls all the heat out of your molds? Instantly. It's only an thick. I think that uh, that thickness is perfect actually for diffusion and then whatever else the plate's touching in the air and stuff, it can pull the heat out of that. We're talking about copper heat diffusers for uh, cooling off molds. Sorry, while I'm doing my super glue and baking soda thing. This stuff's actually pretty thin, guys. I'm kind of impressed with this little tube of super glue. Yeah, that baking soda goes right into it. A little spritzy poo. And we have a covered lead hole going great. This is actually going to be an extremely functional bait. Actually, maybe I could just seal it with this super glue. Yeah, man, that's gonna work. And it doesn't even burn my finger that bad. I'm impressed with this little tube right here. It's, it's good stuff. That one burned. But yeah, that wood's sealed. Just drilled the pilot hole. We're gonna put the hardware in this and then we're gonna paint it. And by hardware, I mean only the front hook hanger because the other two have to go in after the clear coat set. By the way, it's 10.30. I started this pretty early this morning. Got up more earlier than normal because I'm at somebody else's house and I want to look like a responsible adult. <laughs> but this is a legit one day. Just letting you guys know. Black 3.0. It's the blackest black in the world. I already told you about it. Let's see how it looks on a lure. This thing's ready to be painted. Dang it, should have brought some little vice grips. We are securing some vice grips. But yeah, this paint is so black, it hides all imperfections. Like little sanding marks. I mean, I could put a, a golf ball pattern on the outside of this bait and paint it this, and you won't be able to see it after it's dry. There's no gloss to this, it's just very black. And I am interested in knowing what it's gonna look like after a clear coat. Probably not as black, but oh well. I, I, I need a clear coat on this bait. All right, we have quite the pair of vice grips here. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna squirt a little right here. So yeah, this. This isn't very interesting. I'm just painting with a paintbrush this bait. 
and making it very black. This might need two coats. You would think the blackest paint in the world wouldn't need two coats, but I'm seeing some bald spots. That's okay. We can hit it with the heat gun too. Dry it up real quick and put another coat on. First coat applied. Let's get this dried off here. Heat gun actually works pretty good on this stuff. Does that just look like a void to you guys? Yeah, that's what it looks like on the camera. In person, I can see tiny, tiny striations just because the coat's not thick enough, but on camera, I think that just looks like a void. What the heck even is that? <laughs> I'm gonna wait probably 10 more minutes and then we're gonna clear coat this. I'm gonna brush it on and then break my LED floodlight out or UV LED floodlight out and get it set. This will be interesting to see if it makes it less or more black. Just from putting that dollop on right there, I've confirmed it's more. That looks way more black. Too bad you guys can't actually see any of this. <laughs> okay, now I have to come see. That's, oh that's before and then, yeah, you guys see a glare and you see a lot of reflected light but it just added depth and made it just solid black in person here. I really hope black is the color today. That is going to drip dry for a while, and I'm gonna hit it with the light. I'm gonna have to figure something out for this. Oh, I, I just figured it out. <laughs> I'll just rotate it every once in a while. So roughs the body. Then you can see it's finishing the tail. I need to bring that out a little more. It'll come back to the paddles and do the ribbing. Dang. Yeah, and you can see, like see that? Like we need to step out the roughing a little more because it's making chunks on the finished oh, yep. model. So that's what I was talking about. But it's looking pretty good. Dude, that looks really good. Yeah, it's a pretty bait. The force of that coming through is gonna kinda like fill that whole tail. I don't think we're gonna have bubbles. Like really quickly, just. Yeah, I think it'll just be like, so it'll kind of come in and down and push to the bottom vent and then just like, I picture it coming down and going like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. So it kind of will push and out it's, the air. It's a, it's a perfect tube coming and hitting a flat surface and it's just gonna push everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I got you. While I was doing the one day, Jason's been doing this. A little bit of fine tuning to do to get <laughs> some chunks off, but it's going good. Almost this is a pretty bait. Yeah. Uh. I forgot the eyes. So this is gonna have two clear coats. Let's put the eyes on right now and get another clear coat on here. Extra durable bait. Look at that. Okay, fellas. Okay. Real talk. After I put the clear coat on this, it catches light and reflects it. And I think that made the black not as black. Um, I don't really care because we put that paint on here and it's on and this is the bait. I'm going to assemble it right now. Clear coat set. I'm going to use this little black sleeve. I think this came off of like a bobber stop. It's a nice hard plastic. I'm going to use that as a rivet or a bearing or whatever you want to call that. The backing for one of these blades. Just on the nose. Well, probably on the tail too. That is a tough plastic, dude. So for the nose. It goes blade first, rivet, and then screw it in. That's gonna look kind of spiffy. That's gonna look like it belongs. Just a little black tube coming off the end. This is so much screw eye for such a tiny bait that I'm not gonna add glue to it. Yeah, wow. That just spins forever. Perfect. Let me get the tail on here. Put some sticky sharp owner treble hooks on this. This is the bait. Got to spin the back one too. Woo! Just a solid black spy bait. Jason is about to go load the code into the machine for the backup. One final, one final test here. Make sure everything's good, and then we're gonna go run. Oh man. <laughs> So many files. Here we go. Thirty-five ish minute machine time. We'll get one of these molds cut. Do you want to shoot some of these before we go and have them? And yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're gonna shoot some of these before we go and have them on our trip. We're gonna try to make this official too, along with my spy bait. Gotta make everything official.
The machine just cut the mold. We have to flip it over and cut the back off still, but let's look at it. I see an issue. What are you seeing? The machine is wrapping too soon from groove to groove, but I think that we'll clear that up and this will be a good test or bait and then we'll, we'll finalize that design right after we test it. Gotcha. All right, we're gonna cut the back off of that and then we're gonna have two pieces. We're gonna clamp them all together and shoot it. See how it works. Everything looked great. We looked it over a lot and it looks great. Once that cut is finished, we'll have a mold that we can test. I'm heating up colors already. As you can see, these rods almost snap into place. That's insane. Like, they don't come out, they fit that good. But these are aluminum rods. That's what we're using right now as the core. We're gonna shoot the shell, take the rods out, and shoot the core. That's insane. That's, yeah. that's how many thousands? One Hold thousands. Just one? Around it, yeah. Wow. It's a pretty tight tolerance. I see no imperfections. That's cool, it's all, it's two on one rod. This is a uh, saltwater plastic. The hardest that bait plastic sells. That's kind of nifty though, look at that. Oh, I didn't oil my rods. Oh, thanks. I didn't oil my rods. Uh, you might be able to still. One side just, we can do that too. It came off still. Everything's fine. I'm gonna get all these off, put them back in the mold and shoot the cores. Okay, we have very hot plastic right here. That's what you need for cores though. That's like 380. I don't recommend 380 for cores. That's just, that just happens to be what it is. And now, here we go. I put a little bit of pressure on that. <laughs> Just in case, you know? Did, oh, what happened? I see it coming out this side. Oh, I didn't clap, clamp the mold well enough. Yeah. Uh, some of them might have turned out. <laughs> yeah. That we can use, but. I always go like high low on the opposite corner. That was my bad. You guys might have saw that. I brought this hand up and I went. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I applied too much pressure. That might just come off, be like flashing coming off the back of the tail though. This makes the best bait in the world. Well. Might just be able to tear that off and the bait's fine. Sure. Yeah, I, I applied way too much pressure. I got a little excited. Some of them churned out though. I think most of them churned out. Professional bait maker right here. Just pop this bottom part off because I didn't have the bottom part clamped. This bait plastic saltwater blend is insanely hard. <laughs> that's good stuff. So that's the flashing because I applied too much pressure. It got into the air vents and everything and I didn't have the bottom clamped well enough. But the ones that churned out, churned out. Look at that, the cores, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. That is a thing of beauty. You can laminate this mold too, so you can have a top color and a bottom color on the shell and then one color in the core. I guess you could laminate the core too, but I don't know why you'd wanna do that. Wow, there's no cavities in the tails either. We'll do a lot more shooting of this mold, but first impressions are spot on. The fishing section of this one day is about to commence. We are at the first place I'm gonna try fishing in Alabama with Jason and Amanda today. Ooh. Jason's fishing with the backup. I have the spy bait. See if this place is any good. Oh, that is a good rate of fall. Oh, let's get some shots so you guys, you guys can see what this does. Typical spy bait action. And really there's not much to a spy bait action, but there's actually a tiny wobble. A very slight wobble. Okay, let's fish. I should take a thumbnail before I snag my bait. <laughs> I said I should take a thumbnail before I snag my bait. Here, I'll step down there. 
very 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 slightly kind of too slightly so because it's symmetrical it just catches water evenly and it's not gonna like if you leave it just let the current take it i think the whole bait's just doing this instead of just the tail so we have to change the shape of the tail we can't change the shape of the core dang oh well gotta test it to know now we know Uh oh, oh well, Amanda's catching fish. I think she has a 1.7 prey bait on. I'm at, I don't know. I'm wondering what to do with this bait. If I should rip it through the current or if I should get it, keep it along the banks. It'll come out. What the heck? I think my line wrapped around something. That's not good. I might have just lost this bait. That was a stupid cast. Well, <laughs> my first bait that I've ever made in Alabama. Sorry, I'm tying my shoe right now for some reason. I lost my first bait that I've ever made in Alabama. You guys don't have a outside perspective camera to see the disappointment on my face right now, but that happened. Dang it. Anytime that happens, it is just such a, you're just at a loss for words, you're at a loss for thought. Just at a big loss, you know? Ah, well, at least I can fish with the backup. Yeah? Oh, Jason just caught a wiper on the backup. Wow. It is. It's official. Oh, it just fell out. Oh, jeez, boy. <laughs> I forgot wiper were so. Or is this a white bass? White. Oh, that's white. White bass. Like the backup. Thank the Lord, because I lost the spy bait. You guys don't even know that. <laughs> I just did, like, as you were catching that fish, pretty much. Shut up. It's okay. We have the backup. Uh, I was going to say, this is the spot you need to throw. Away. Can I release your fish? Okay. Be free. You have a fish? They're catching fish like crazy. Man has got a decent one. Babe. Oh, the wiper, or the white bass are in. On the 1.7, baby. It's official. <laughs> so the verdict is we're not happy enough with the action on this bait. Um, we're going to probably go back to the shop tonight, make some modifications, get out there again. We'll see. But we're definitely making modifications. The tail needs to flap more, or kick more. It just being a flat thing that comes straight out. What if it's it's tapered out more? Oh, that helps. It's gonna move more. It'll be faster. It's gonna move more. Oh, that one. Oh my god, right next to you. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this. Oh. And it's a decent white bass. Oh! You're <laughs> neat. No, you're good. <laughs> I'll cast towards it a little bit. There we go. Oh my god. No, I didn't even. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> That's... <laughs> I snagged a bluegill. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> okay. They're laughing so much because I'm having such a hard time catching a fish. Oh, Jeez. The booty hole. That's a decent one. Yeah, that's not a bad bass. Oh my god! Dang, that's like a two pounder. Wow. Not bad. So they're in here? Yeah. Sick. It's official. You can snag bass in here. <laughs> it's nice to know that that's down there, though. No, yeah, that's switch colors every like two casts. Oh, oh. That's a snag. Oh. Or maybe it wasn't. I don't. That's a good fish. That's a fish. Yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> I'll get ready in case I have to jump in. I have a good fish on. It might be snagged. Catfish. It's, sur it's coming to the surface a little bit. Oh it's a submarine, bro. Oh. I hope it's legitimately hooked. Maybe. Is there a carp? Ah, uh, it's not. What is it? It's by the tail. Catfish? Wait, that's an eater catfish. We're taking it for the wind. I think it's a normal sized fish. It's just hooked weird. Oh. I don't yeah, it's know. hooked by the tail. 
hooked a, it's a oh, car. Yeah, I hooked a couple salmon in my day by the tail, and it was like, Want me to go down there and lift it, or you got it? Is that a carp? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a carp. Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> that's a decent carp. It looked like it just a convent or a common. He's a little heavy. <laughs> Did it have a fish attached to it? Is there something on that? You see that? Yeah, there's something on it. Ooh. Yeah, Ew. <laughs> Come over, walk over this side of me. Oh, came off. Oh, there you go. Dude, that was insane. That was huge. Okay. I probably have some footage of this bait's action playing right now. Not particularly impressive, is it? <laughs> We're making changes. We wanted to see if we just attached a perfectly symmetrical tube to a perfectly symmetrical disc right in the center of it. What is it going to do? And really all it does is add a bit of a bend and a wobble to the body. It's not so much the tail that's moving, it's it's almost like a lip on a crankbait and it wants to move the body of the bait instead of just kick the tail. I think both of us kind of had a feeling that that might happen. We didn't know what would happen, but now we're making modifications to it, very specific ones, that we intend to have this thing just have an erratic action kind of good, you know? We're going for something different. We don't want to just make a paddle tail, so we're, we're bending the disc. We're, we might attach webs to the disc off of the tube and whatnot, but yeah, you guys will see. Go to there. Okay, well, I'll work for that. <laughs> Sometimes Jason yells at it for it to work. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> there we go. Something like that, that connects it. That, yeah. And then this will be, it'll be rounded. It's gonna be a round tip tool that goes in there, so it won't be like a, a freaking yep. a box. Yep. We might have just achieved maximum flappage. We've been in a lure making scramble. This, this might be what we cut. We're almost there. There is so much you have to take into consideration. There's venting, there's where is a burr gonna be after the tool passes and if you have a sharp cut off and stuff. There's paths of tools that you have to take and like finish cuts. What's gonna be your finish cut? What's your rough out? What's your blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's a lot. We've been sitting here for, is it over an hour now or about yeah. an hour? Just to get this tail redesigned and to make sure that, we're not gonna know until we cut the aluminum, but just to do our best right now to have a clean mold at the end. It's a lot. Those are cut, the new mold's cut. Let's make this quick. You, you saw the new design and everything. We're gonna shoot some more. We'll show you the baits quick here. Snap these rods into place. Shoot some shells. Shells. Time to shoot the core. And I hope you fellas are ready, because I certainly am. The new epic backup. <laughs> oh, it's looking good. It's looking good. I'm looking close and I see no imperfections. Nice and clean. There's a test tank in their house that we're about to go to to test out one of these so we can see very close up back. Well, you already saw it. I showed you just before, okay, let's go. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, now you can slow it down a little bit more. I'll get some more of that. Yep. And that is a success. That action, having the paddle shaped the way it is with that thinner section, why isn't it focusing? You guys probably picked up, a, like you saw it on the Mac there, that thinner section going to the paddle that's curved made it much more of a tight, aggressive, like a You don't, we were not going for this huge smacking thing. We want something to zone in on that the fish target and it's not going everywhere it's a it's like a wintertime finesse bait kind of thing but 
obviously it can be used year round. Everybody has preferences and stuff. I love this style of bait where it's it's not just a big twister tail, it's think, uh, a big flap smacking around, it's not a big paddle tail, it's just kick, 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 kick. That has its application, of course, but this style of bait that's subtle, that's almost like it's not trying to get attention attracted to itself a lot, but it just looks like a meal. It looks like a bait fish or some sort of food for fish having trouble, you know? Deadly. We're actually gonna go for trout today with these. I mean, if that's not a trout bait right there, I'm not even gonna finish that saying. That is a trout bait right there. <laughs> I'm gonna do one more crawler, I'll show you it, and then we'll go trout fishing. One more thing, fellas, remember to oil your rods. It's kind of important. With this bait, it's not as important because the shells aren't super long. It's not like a, a five inch worm or anything. It's just like a an inch of plastic that you're pulling off of a rod. That is a wonderful shell. You see how it is pretty much clear over here, and then it darkens. It clears up again. You're going to be able to see the chartreuse at the nose and then right about there the chartreuse will show up and then boom. I got a really thick, thick might be the wrong word, bright chartreuse in the microwave right now. We're going to close that up and shoot it. I'll show you. I'm, I have confidence in this color right now. Chartreuse cores are shot. Let's see. Oh wow. Do you see? You can see the core all the way through that actually. But look at how gradual that color is that fade to such a bright chartreuse that's that's beautiful that is trout bait right there i just wanted to show you that because i like bags of baits and those are amazing well the trout lake was closed how unfortunate that just means we can come back here and murder these fish with this bait that now works better maybe the cold front did damage or like kind of didn't do any good for the fishing you know You did? Whew, Jason just got a catfish. He brought some cut bait. That was quick. Oh, it's a decent one. Look at that. Dude, that's, that's exciting. Not bad. Yeah, almost three pounder, probably. Yeah. Whew. You keep him and put him back. What do you think? I'm down for putting them back. You don't have to keep them. <laughs> yeah, Let me get a picture. Of this stuff. Okay. He's a skipjack herring. Wow. Yeah. And just like that, we're back in Iowa. My trip to Alabama is complete, and we're back. It was a quick trip. We caught those catfish. We actually caught one more, and I pretty much booked it back home after that. So I wanted to get the drive over, so I just drove back that night, and it was a great trip, though. Thank you for having me. Jason and Amanda, the epic bait molds couple. There's some things I wanna show you. What all of the baits were made out of that we tested in Alabama was saltwater blend from bait plastics. That's a very, very uh, tough, durable, stiff plastic. And I do not know why I didn't shoot any like soft plastic blends or medium blends, you know? But I have a couple right here. Up here, the water is still very hard. It's gonna be a while. And I don't have a big, awesome, fancy, amazing test tank like they got. That's what this box is actually right here. I'm building a plywood test tank and pond sealing it and waterproofing it and everything. And it's taking me a long time. It'll be done eventually. Bear with me, folks. But let's have a look at this. That is so much more flappy. I can't get enough distance to show the tail flap, but I would definitely say it's a little bit more just based off, off of looking at it from the top and not through the viewfinder. It's one, it's flapping side to side, not up and down here. Maybe I can show that actually. Yeah, this one is getting a lot more bend in that tube from the tiny distance i'm able to actually move it i can see that tube essing nicely that is good stuff yes actually a decent amount of trial and error went into that bait the modifications were made and woke up that morning after the first design and we just we discussed for quite a while different things that we could do we didn't want to just go with like bring a web off the tube to the bottom of a paddle and just have that thing smacking like crazy because it's it's a tube and it's skinny 
And you can make these look so nice. You can add visual flake and shininess to the bait. It doesn't have to be this crazy smacking thing that, I don't know, a more finesse fish can key in on and then bite. A lot of the time with uh, micro ultralight baits, I just get the feel that it's, it was just put together with something conventional that already works and it's just this crazy tiny smacking thing. Still relying on reaction bites from your ultralight stuff instead of uh, match the hatch realism. Uh, yeah, instead of forcing bites, I guess is all I'm trying to say. Do you like that color, by the way? That, that purple tail with the chartreuse flake and the chartreuse jig head? I like that. The epic backup. Lovely little unique bait. It's like, it seriously is a cross between a worm, a grub, a tube, and kind of a swim bait. Core shot, color options are endless, laminatable shells. I cannot wait to hit the creeks with this this year once the ice is gone. Anywho, I think this video is over. At least I can completely forget about driving over 700 miles to snag a bait in a tree. And that was made, which is way better. <laughs> I had a ton of fun. It was a fantastic trip. On to the next bait. You say hi? You say hi? Come here. Come here. Say hello. Say hello, everybody. I haven't shown Chip in a long time. Here he is. He edits with me. I just needed to say, link in the description if you're interested in purchasing the Epic Backup Mold. I didn't say that that whole video. I should probably say that and support Epic Bait Molds and stuff. And they're awesome. Go support Epic Bait Molds. Go get this mold. You couldn't buy from a better company. Go up. On to the next page.